person sees all. We're going to do a simple test. We're using a round light, okay? You can call it a, a cheap test if you want. I call it a common sense test. we got everybody talking about what light does and how it reacts in space and what shadows are supposed to look like. But have any of you actually taken the time just with your hands or in the house to analyze yourself visually what you're seeing? With the light source over top there, I'm just creating a ground here. Let's say, let's say that's Earth, okay? Well, that light source, I'm going to pass something over it round, okay? Like a, a ball. I'm not going to use the crystal yet because I'll explain that, how to make a visible, invisible planet. Very simple, by applying light and a see-through ring. We're going to make this a circle go over top of um, really close, like the moon is going close to the sun during the eclipse and not Earth. Well, look at the ground. You don't see any. You see a lot of stuff, right, but not a pronounced shadow like if I was lower, right? There's a shadow. So talking about pronounced shadows, well, it's not pronounced here. And the further I go away from that sun, Okay, the further I go away, the more you're going to see a pronounced and well-defined edge of a shadow. That's a shadow, by the way. It looks like an actual physical object, right? As you see it there. So the further away from Earth and the closer to the light source the moon would be, the less we would see it and the less pronounced would the edges of that shadow be. And that quite simply explains it, where you see a not well-pronounced edge here. And you see a well-pronounced edge when it goes further away from the light source approaching this surface, which represents Earth. So you see the edge of the light, right? So quite simply, I'm close to a light source. I'm just going to take this, even this cover, the cover of my uh, infrared. It's flat. Let's pretend it's flat Earth, okay? Or flat moon. As it's going by, you see the shadow underneath it. Back it up here, the light. The shadow underneath it's not very pronounced, right? When we go down... So if a light source is more extended in one direction, so in other words, getting further away from that light source, then the shadows associated with the light source will be more blurry in one direction than the other, right? And this is what I'm showing. For instance, uh, look closely at the shadow at your hand in a room at night with only a, a single long fluorescent light bulb turned on and Holding your hand in one direction, the tips of your fingers are going to be very well defined, but the sides will not. Um, and if you turn sideways, well, then the sides are defined and the, uh, the tip is not. Basic way of understanding it. There's diffraction of light, but diffraction of light in natural light sources should not be pronounced. It's a very rare um, happening. So... It's not for nothing scientists are talking about distances. There's some truth to that, right? Now look how pronounced it is, right? This, of course, it's a crystal, but you can see, see, still see the roundness around it. So the closer to the light source I get, the less pronounced on Earth's ground surface, uh, you know, the shadow will be, and it will be more blurry. And then, because there's light scattering, you know, you, you got to take all that into consideration on Earth. There's light scattering. There's certain things like diffraction in nature. It doesn't occur uh, very often. It's extremely rare. Once it gets to the point of complete totality, the light will dim and you will see the incredible spiking of the corona. That's the sun's atmosphere. Look at that. This is the bottom of the sun turned upwards. I'll be showing many angles. I have already shown many angles. So it's not a process that lasts very long, but boy, did I get some cool shots in that little bit of time. I like seeing the part of this transitioning phase. See how they can hide planets? That blinding light just there on the edge is gonna hide the entire two spheres that are in, in front of us. Why is the moon's shadow perfectly symmetrical? The moon is not symmetrical. There's another problem there. A lot of you noticed, like me, that it seems that for a while the moon is on fire and the fires are very precisely following the moon's movement prominence a coronal spiking and you can see them all around the sun the one on the right is facing earth that's the bottom of the sun as we look at it both angles and i'll get a close-up of the side angle too as you see it veering off of the sun 
off the chromosphere, the coronal atmosphere around the sun facing Earth, even its tip pointing towards Earth. Some say the two devil horns up there that we can see here. You can see the minute the moon was just to say touching the edge of the sun, I looked beside it, it's not there. So there is not a physical moon that we see. I'm not saying it's not going physically between the earth and the sun, but it, we definitely don't see it. We didn't here in Canada, and I don't think anyone does. I have an easy way, you guys all know it and gals, of being able to see objects in space by just quite simply adjusting the exposure. There's nothing beside the sun. So whatever went by had a too well-defined line. Shadows don't have well-defined lines. So I have a theory. How hard would it be to create a ring, quite simply, that we could light up a see-through planet or hollow ring that sits in front of a planet or moon and that absolutely hides it? And for you to understand that, we're going to look at footage that is actually going to explain it for us visually. And maybe you can see it. This is just theorizing. We're having fun here. So look, everything becomes invisible when that light appears on the corner. That one strong pronounced light creates a light all around it. And you can see there on the right and all around it, that pronounced light. Here, look at the flames, by the way, which are facing Earth. You can see that the flames are coming out facing Earth. That's the coronal spiking, right? It's uh, 10,000 degrees Kelvin rising up. It's colder than the more dense and confined heat in the sun, they say. So this is what they say. Watch this. This part here, very interesting. This is how you make things invisible. Watch what happens. Everything goes invisible. Both the sun and the moon can't be seen and all you see is that ring of light going around but it even gets invisible in just that spot of light so now if something is beside the sun we wouldn't see it and this is the principal way of showing it this is the ideal of being able to understand that and seeing that NASA looks for planets beside these bright objects because they hide the planets and you could literally see uh, like the sun and the planet being hidden but actually because of the sun's light now look you literally see it's invisible so some technology to be able to hide a planet or even hide earth or camouflage it it can be done with fake suns the more bright lights we stick around earth the less anyone outside of the solar system or even further out in the solar system will be able to see if we put lights up around earth mars won't even be able to see uh, earth
nothing less than spectacular, spectacular, breathtaking video, live footage of this recent total eclipse. I hope you enjoyed it. More on the way, guys. UFO video coming up next. Out of a tunnel. Paul Let Ruth Kelly, Eric Dubé, Darla, Pat. Everyone, thanks for gifting up the memberships. Thanks for the interest. Ah, oh, aliens on the moon, when are they gonna tell the world? Come on, Pentagon! Aliens on the moon, aliens on the moon, and they mind them. Thank you very much for the support to this channel. Everyone, thanks for the generous contributions and thanks for watching the videos. Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon. Disclosure's coming soon.